Uh, this is the third lecture for module two. We're going to be focusing on uh, homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. So uh, I talked about characteristic equation uh, last week, but I'm going to get more detail into it and uh, talk about the solutions to the characteristic equations and what those roots mean in terms of writing the solution for the differential equation. Again, we're going to be working at this stage with constant coefficient differential equations, and I'm going to be taking a second order differential equation as an example. So if I had an a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equal to zero, and as you can see, we're dealing with a homogeneous constant coefficient second order linear differential equation. Now, it turns out that if your differential equation has constant coefficients, your solution is going to be some form of an exponential function. So it's been verified that some e to the mx will always be a solution to a constant coefficient differential equation independent of the order of the derivative. And if that's the case, then we can take appropriate derivatives, plug them back into the differential equation to see what happens. Now, if y equals e to the mx is to be a solution of a second order differential equation, obviously, if you take the appropriate derivatives and plug it into the differential equation, it must satisfy the differential equation. So let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to skip the algebra of taking, or the calculus of taking the derivatives and plugging them in and cleaning them up. I'll just write what happens at the end when you do so. You end up with an equation that looks like e to the mx times quantity am squared plus bm plus c equals zero. Mind you, the a, b, and c are actually the coefficients of the differential equation given to you. Now, if you have two expressions like that, or two products that have been set equal to zero, then either one could be zero to make that happen. But in this case, we all know that e to the mx doesn't touch zero. So the only way we could find our roots here is to take the equation that is next to it and set that equal to zero to find out the particular m values that are going to make your solution an actual solution. This is what we call a characteristic equation to the given differential equation. And the solution is constructed based on the roots of this equation. So what happens is you find the characteristic equation for a differential equation, you solve it, and based on its roots, you decide how the solutions are going to look like. So let's talk about our cases, obviously. We're solving algebraic equations, and we all know when we solve algebraic equations, we have three scenarios. So what I'll do is I'll write the three different scenarios that you could find roots for, for different different characteristic equations, and I'll show you what each one means in terms of an actual solution to the given differential equation. So if you set up your characteristic equation and you solve it, you're going to have three scenarios. Case one, you'll have distinct real roots, distinct real roots. Case two, you'll have repeated roots, still real, repeated real roots. And case three, we'll have complex conjugate roots or complex, co complex solutions or complex roots. And they all come in pairs, we know that. So these are all possibilities of you having roots for different types of characteristic equations. Now, for case one, if I have distinct real roots, and I'm assuming my roots are m1 and m2, and remember I'm writing it for a second order, so I'll only end up with two roots. If I was dealing with a third order differential equation, the characteristic equation would have reduced to a third power algebraic equation and it will produce three roots and so on and so forth. But the pattern is the same. So I'm just going to stick to two roots and show you the solution. So if you solve your characteristic equation and end up with distinct real roots and your roots are m1 and m2, then your general solution will be C1e to the m1x plus C2e to the m2x. 
So the roots of your characteristic equation will just be the coefficients of your two exponential functions. And there is your solution for the given differential equation if you have distinct real roots. Now, if you had more than two roots, it would have just been c1 e to the m1x plus c2 e to the m2x plus c3 e to the m3x plus c4 e to the m4x and so on. But since, again, we're dealing with a second order differential equation here, you'll only end up with two roots and therefore you'll end up with two fundamental solutions and you can write the solution as such. For case two, we have repeated real roots. Uh, for example, I solve my characteristic equation and I end up with two roots, m1 and m1. Just a random example of this will be something like x minus 2 to the power of 2 equals 0. So the solution is 2 and it happens twice. So that's what we mean when we're talking about repeated roots. All right, so if you have m1 and m2 as your repeated roots, you could write your solution as c1e to the m1x plus c2xe to the m1x. An introduction of that x in the middle there as a, as a factor or product to the exponential is what appears when you have repeated roots. Now, obviously, if you look at a pattern, if you have more roots, then in general, you could write your solution as c1e to the m1x plus c2 x e to the m2 x sorry m1 x plus c3 x squared e to the m1 x plus c4 x cubed e to the m1 x and that just continues depending on what the multiplicity of your root is and that's the solution you'll get if you have repeated real roots our final case case three is when you have complex conjugate pairs as solutions. So at this point, we have solved our characteristic equations, and we've realized that we have m1 alpha plus i beta as a solution, and m2 is alpha minus i beta as a solution or a root. And what do we do if we have complex conjugate pairs as solutions? Well, Basically, pretty much, you could just write the solution using the first case, whereas you could say, well, my solution, my general solution, is going to be C1e to the first power of alpha plus i, I beta x plus C2e to the power of alpha minus i beta x. Now, having gone through calculus courses and linear algebra, possibly, we have not much seen... Uh, functions with complex exponents and we're much, much more comfortable dealing with, with real exponents. And it turns out that this solution could be massaged and it could be converted using Euler's identity. If you recall, e to the i theta could be written as cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So they've used Euler's identity to massage that equation. And it turns out, and again, you can see the proof on my lecture notes and I'm not going to do it here. But it turns out that if you actually go through the motion of using the Euler's identity and some interesting stuff, as again, you could see on my PowerPoint, you could ultimately show that you can also write the solution here as y general for the third case when you have complex conjugate pairs as c1. Well, actually, you could just write e to the alpha x and then brackets c1 cosine of beta x plus c2 sine of beta x and that will be your solution which pretty much is the same as the one that we wrote with exponential exponents but this one is much lighter on the eye per se and more desired by people that do this so here are uh, the three different types of solutions you can get when you have different types of roots that are going to come out of your characteristic equation and the best way, of course, to see all of this is to do a few examples for each case. So here we go. I'll start with uh, distinct real roots. This is example 21 from your PowerPoint. I have a differential equation, 2y double prime minus 5y prime minus 3y equal to 0. 
and they've asked me to solve the second order differential equation. Now, if I assume that y is equal to e to the mx is a solution and take appropriate derivatives and plug it into the differential equation and simplify it, I'll end up with a characteristic equation that's going to look like 2m squared minus 5m minus 3 equal to 0. And you all could see that, of course, I've skipped a lot, you know, a few steps, whereas you could plug it in and simplify it and factor it and see that. But you could pretty much see that you really don't need to go through the motion every time you want to solve a differential equation to find the roots of a characteristic equation. It looks like you could just look at the given differential equation and you could figure out what the characteristic equation is going to be without having to go through always starting with the original solution, taking derivatives, plugging it in and wasting a lot of time, especially if you know what the end product is going to look like. So you really don't need to go through this whole process of always assuming that that's your solution and taking derivatives to find a characteristic equation. You can just find the characteristic equation by simply looking at the coefficients of your differential equation. And all you have to do is just, if it's a y double prime, you write it as m squared. If it's y triple prime, you'll write it as m cubed. And if it's no derivative, and if y doesn't have any derivative, then there's just no m's, it's just a constant. So it's not that difficult to see how you could simply write the characteristic equation as 2m squared minus 5m minus 3 equal to 0. Now if I solve this equation by factoring it, I'll have 2m and m. I'm looking for two numbers and multiply to 3 and add to 5, taking 2 into account. So I'm going to write this as, uh, looks like I write the 3 here, 1 there. They multiply, they add to minus 5, so the larger one has to be a minus, and they multiply to a negative 3, so one of them has to be a minus, the other one a plus. So from here, I have my solutions as minus 1 half and 3. So I have two solutions, those are my roots, and those are real and distinct numbers. So I could very simply now, I'm going to write this in red, I could very simply write my general solution as... That's right, C1e to the minus 1 half x plus C2e to the 3x. And that becomes my solution. So you can clearly see that distinct real roots will produce that solution for this differential equation. Now let's look at some repeated roots, an example of that sort. So let's move on to this problem, y double prime minus 10y prime plus 25y equal to 0. Let's write the characteristic equation here. m squared minus 10m plus 25 equal to 0. This gives me m minus 5 to the power of 2 equal to 0. So here you clearly see that 5 is a repeated root, multiplicity of 2. So m is equal to m1 is equal to m2 and is equal to 5. All right, well, as you all know from the cases, now I could simply write my solution as c1e to the 5x plus c2x e to the 5x. And again, if there was three fives, so you had triple uh, solutions, repeated solutions of third order, you would, you would put c1e to the 5x plus c2x e to the 5x plus c3x squared e to the 5x, and that would have been the solution for that. So here is an example of a repeated root. Let's look at an example of a complex conjugate pairs as solutions. So example, let's write one that will produce a complex solution. If you write the characteristic equation, y double prime plus y prime plus y equal to zero. If I were to write the characteristic equation for this, I would have had m squared plus m plus one equal to zero. And obviously you can't factor this, but if you use the quadratic formula, you can clearly see that your solution is going to be minus one half plus or minus i square root of 3 over 2, and you could verify this. So here, my alpha is minus 1 half, and my beta is square root of 3 over 2. And recalling the solution for case 3, I can then write my general solution as e to minus 1 half x 
times C1 cosine of beta x, which is rad 3 over 2x, plus C2 sine of beta x, which is rad 3 over 2x. And that will become our solution to a characteristic equation that will produce complex conjugate pairs as the roots. And this will conclude the section on producing characteristic equations that will ultimately help you find the solution to the differential equation by looking at the nature of the roots of those characteristic equations. Okay, guys, good luck on this section, and I'll see you guys on the next one.